For starters, congratulations, Avi Josie. You just won um, a design prize for this can. Oh yeah, that was a set yesterday. Of cans. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, you want to yeah. tell us what Avi Josie is and what what that design was for? What, what was that about? Uh, so Avi Josie is a animation visual effects uh, of virtual effects. It's Comics Post for South Africa. Yeah, it's Comics Post for South Africa, and uh, the it's a it's a it's a cross platform sort of meeting of uh, people who are producers, people yeah. who are creators. Um, obviously, Netflix, Netflix was there, so that was fantastic. Yeah. Um, the event happened at University of Joburg, and it was packed, very black. Packed to the bleachers. Packed to the bleachers. Yeah. And um, they had a competition running, which was like, yo, how do we embody uh, Joburg? Because it's happening in Joburg. Wow. And I've lived there a little bit. Yeah. Everyone thinks I live there. I live here. And every I, time it's like, oh, I, I think I think every Zimbabwean lives in Joburg. Yeah, just a little bit. It's like Zimbabwe extension one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so I designed two. I yeah. designed two because I had the time. Yeah. Um, one of them, which I really like, and the other, which actually spoke to the brief. Okay, great. Yeah. So just so you get a little bit of context of what he designed, there were uh, soda cans, like the aluminum type of cans, but they were themed with illustrations and graphics that he made based on what Avi Josie was about. So a number of applicants uh, came up with designs, and our very own Bill Masuku won. I only discovered this early in the morning. I got the call. Oh. Yeah. Did you hear about the other thing that happened yesterday? No, no, I did not. Okay. Is it legal to talk about it? It is right? legal. Okay, wonderful. Go ahead. It is legal to talk about. Wow. <laughs> These NDAs are crazy, eh? Mm -hmm. um, so yesterday it was announced that um, Kugali and uh, uh, Disney Hyperion, which is the book publishing company, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're working together on an yeah. a, a imprint called Kugali Inc. Yeah. And there's two books that are coming out in 2025. Mm -hmm. One is Akani and one is Runeless by me. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yay. Congratulations. Yay. Okay, that's, that's incre incredible. So if you looked at our program, that's a great segue. For those of you who haven't gotten our program, we are sponsored by Telco. And you can go online right now. If you go to your phone, access the Telco network. You don't need to put in a password. You'll be online just like that. I know, it's like magic. So, number one, don't ask me for a paper program. It's not 1993. And number two, check out the program on the Comics Post page. Um, Telco, amazing partner. Thank you. Moving on. How is that a segue? It's it, it <laughs> it an advert. Yeah, well, it's my job. It's my job. <laughs> okay, word. Thank you, Telco, so much. Yeah. I'm on the Wi-Fi. It's pretty good. I'm posting pictures. Um, what else? No, we, we were talking. You were talking about the book. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about the book. So give us a bit of background. When did you write the book? What's the book about? Oh, and then we're going to talk a little no, bit no, about no, personal We can brands. only say that the book is coming. The, the rest of the NDA is like, I don't know who's listening. I don't know what snipers are in the building. Yeah. It's going to be a good book. So, I've uh, put yeah. my whole foot in it. Yeah. Um, it. It's really a culmination of everything that I've learned so far. Mm -hmm. You know, I started uh, my first tabling was at Comic Spores. Yeah, at, well, for the first comic book day. Yeah, um, in 2016. In 2016. And since then, like really just learning from other creators, you know, yeah. traveling, uh, being able to speak to people who are high in the industry, yourself yeah. included. Thank you. And like when the when I made the pitch, I was like, I really, really, really like the story, mm -hmm. but I don't think people are gonna get it. Mm. And a lot of the time, Zimbabweans are not trendsetters; we're trend followers. Mm. And so when you come up with something new, like there's that fear that like people aren't gonna get this. This is yeah. gonna remain untitled document number one for a long time. And then there's that little bit of jealousy where it's like, oh, you see a concept of yours on TV yeah. and you, you thought of this three years ago. Bingo. And like taking that, that step forward to say, okay, not everyone will get this, but if the right people get this, it's going to work out. Wow. 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 No, clap hands. That was deep. Like <laughs> bars. They say bars now. Bars. bars. And scripts. So, so I want to talk a little bit about um, personal brands, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much the topic of our talk, but I'm interested in it. Uh, in, with regards to what you've been doing over the years. How have you managed to make a distinction between Enigma Comics, which was a thing, is a thing, right? And uh, Bill Masugu, and the different services and products that you've put out. Um, I was very interested to see that you've got um, a range of crackers, like edibles. Like, no, you, no, 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 not like, these no, no, are just, no, yeah. Bush baby. Consumables. 
consumables. <laughs> okay. Food, snacks. Exactly. So, edibles is something else. <laughs> so we've got the, the snacks, we've got the books, we've got Enigma Comics, we've got Bill Masu. How do you make sure that the message of who you are or what you do is clear and consistent? That is a fantastic question, which I should have an immediate answer for. Mm. Uh, but the answer is big. I want to hear the big one. Do you guys want to hear the big answer? I will. I will. I like how she doesn't wait for the question. No, no, no. It's cringe. now. It's now. Um, you need a whiteboard. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I've been making comics since uh, 2016. And everybody who started out, like, let's roll back one sentence. When you were exhibiting at Comic Expos, they had like a training package. And they said, you cannot exhibit if you don't have a banner business cards, uh, Facebook page, and there was one other thing that I keep forgetting, but it was a, it was a starter pack. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was annoying to hear that because it's like, I just want to sell my comic. And so they were like, it, you can't just sell your comic. If, on, if you come to a market and that's the first day you start talking to people, you've, you've missed out on pre-sales. You need to put it in pe people's mind that I'm coming to this event and psychologically I'm putting money aside for A, B, C, D. Yeah. Because there's a finite amount of money that is floating around at any given time. And to have that branding, the mm. Facebook page, yeah. to say, get, get as many people in your friend group to like this page. If they don't, they don't. But if they do, they do. Mm. Um, to create that visibility well before you even start to creating. Like, hey, I'm a comic book artist. This is what I do. Not, yeah. I'm a graphic designer and I also make comics. You've like already, you've already um, kneecapped yourself yeah. by, by, by putting your your public business over your private business. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mute my phone. That's a great idea. Yeah, that's yeah. Really idea. I didn't think I was popular, but clearly. I know, but I nobody know you. <laughs> okay. it, was an, it, was, it was an alarm for this talk. Oh, great, great. Priorities. We like that. We like that. Okay, you were saying? Um, and so putting all of that like visual messaging well before you start was, is super important. And it, it continues to be important. Yeah. Regardless of what event you go to. Um, in Zimbabwe, like it's uh, we all, like if you if you stand at the entrance, everybody's greeting each other. All yeah. the creators know each other. Yeah. But like once you leave the city, go to Blues, go anywhere else, mm. you are a small fish in a mm. very very wide universe. Yeah. And um, you have to start telling people about yourself well before. Yeah. Your, your personal messaging in your comics is also important. Yeah. So I know that it's not popular across the board, but I tell people that. When I'm making Captain South Africa, I'm inspired by the women I went to university with. Mm. And that is a person, that's a thing that no one else here can do. Mm. Like I, I have a very personal experience with those people and I've put that experience into the comic and I'll tell, I'll continue to tell people I was really inspired by those women. Yeah. And that's why Captain South Africa is a woman. Like the decision making in the product yeah. is bringing yourself first. Yeah. And aside from that, it's okay, so why you? And so that's not just a local comics thing when you're pitching to studios for animation. Yeah. It's like, oh, you have this really great concept, but why you? Mm. Like, we could, we could just buy this off you and get better writers. Why mm. are you the person to tell this story? Having to bring yourself into concepts. Most people will say, oh, it's a self-insert. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. bring, bring yourself into your storytelling because that's what people want to see. Like, is it, is it another African superhero or is it about Tokoloshi? Because Tokoloshi speaks to something that it's, we, it was instilled in us, a fear when mm -hmm. we were children. Now, and so that, that's incredible. And I got a segue. I got another special Eugene segue. You're going to love this one. Yeah. You're going to love it. So Togoloshi is one of your current books, isn't it? Yeah. Let's talk about that. It's, it's outside yeah, it's right for now sale. For, sale. for sale. You see what in I did? In English there? and in Shonda. You, you, no, you, you see what I, see what I, I did? Right. Let's Sponsored talk about that. Talk yeah. So now, um, yeah, with, with Togoloshi Hunters, um, kids will come up to the table and they'll be like, this is a cool concept but they don't feel the fear. Mm -hmm. And when people over a certain age band, I'm, I'm looking at like 25, yeah. 25 upwards, the way they react to seeing Tokoloshi Hunters for the first time yeah. is different for people who are you know, 24 and below. Okay. Because there's a, there's a different upbringing. Yeah. Like I, Out I, of interest, mm -hmm. uh, for those who might not know what a Tokoloshi is, for those who might not speak the language, what, what, if you could just briefly define it. I can't. 
Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> so you have to buy the book, but it's also it's also a thing of mm-hmm. um, a lot of like African cultures, in particular Southern Africa, when our mythological creatures are mostly shapeshifters. Yeah, like you changelings, go, changelings, right? Yeah. And when someone asks the question, like, what is a chocolate? The closest things I can think of are like goblin, goblin troll mm-hmm. thing. And those parallels work for like a short term conversation, mm-hmm. but it doesn't give the stakes mm-hmm. because tokoloshi are very tied to um, morality, danger, safety. And it's like, there's small things like close the curtain all the way. And that may seem like a silly thing. Yeah. But it's like, if you don't close the curtain all the way, a tokoloshi will get you. Uh-huh. Right? And, and the real world thing is that people can see into your house and it makes it easier for thieves to plan ahead. Like, like there's, yeah. there's, there's that real, but they don't tell you that back part. Yeah. It's just like, don't go into the forest alone. And if you hear voices, run. Yeah. Right? Because you're probably in danger. You're in a part of the forest that you're not supposed to be in. So there's things like that that can only be told word of mouth. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing my best to try to bring pop culture to culture. Uh-huh. That's amazing. So you mentioned something earlier that um, I totally uh, agree with. Uh, about how everyone is closely knit. All the artists in Harare mm-hmm. are closely knit. Mm-hmm. Uh, depending on where you are in the industry, you might be familiar with the Oblawa, your artists, and Mutari, and so on. Uh, but that's a bit of a privilege, right? It is. Um, but I've had a, a, a totally different experience with regards to you specifically, yeah. in that I could have traveled, or I have traveled as far as, let's say, Cape Town, for example, and I get into a typical conversation because I'm at an event that talks about comic books and video games or whatever that could be. And I mentioned that I'm from Zimbabwe. And then I hear, so you know Bill. So there's, there's something interesting that happens there. Because there are scenarios where I bring up Enigma Comics. And then I get the, oh, what is that? Or I bring up Captain South Africa and I get the, oh, what is that? But then the name kind of has risen above the services, the brands, and all of that. So since we're talking about personal branding, how, how are you working towards either unifying that, or is it deliberate? And if so, why? It's slightly deliberate. Um, so when I got invited to be a guest at Comic-Con Africa the first time, uh, my branding said Enigma Comics. Yeah. And it was a nightmare to find me, because they were mm. looking for the guest Bill Masuku. Bill Masuku. Because, uh, again, like when you, when, you go to, when you go to Comic-Con, you're not looking for Marvel or DC, you're looking for the people who told your favorite stories. Mm. And those people have names. Bill, yeah. Bill Masuku told my favorite story. I don't know what that story is, but I want to talk to Bill Masuku. Precisely. And so I had to start you know, creating that delineation between myself and... Any, so even at the last event, it now says, in name and comments in brackets, and then Bill Masuku. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. So what does that do for the business side of what you're trying to um, achieve? Because... In terms of business, you'll find that the business people want to deal with an organization True. as opposed to the fans who want to discover an individual. True. Uh, so it's actually, it actually goes the other way, like mm. cross-multiplying, where people who are looking to buy or bulk buy or acquisition comic books, yeah. um, they will look for Enigma Comics. But someone who's trying to commission me to make their stuff is looking for Bill Masuku. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Excellent. Trevor, how are we doing on time? We, we, we're doing great, which means now... He ain't got a watch. How can we trust him? <laughs> oh. It was off. He didn't even look, guys. It was like, we're good. No. <laughs> it's that Gen Z technology, Bill. Yes. That Gen Z technology. So I'm going to open up to the floor and take on a few questions. Uh, the scripts and bars guys were chomping at the bit. That, that young man right at the back. But, but I prefer the guys in the front because they're not back benches. Because you know me, guys. You know me. Yeah, discrimination. Let, let's start... <laughs> Let's start with this guy. He's a, he's a famous chap. He, he does this thing about stories that no one has told. No, I'll hold it for you. COVID is real. Am I, am I introducing myself as well? Since, since we're talking about personal branding, why not? Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Farai Mutzingwa. I am the founder of Story Untold. Uh, thanks, Bill, uh, for the talk. I did want to ask you, when it comes to like, research, because your work is spread across like, so many different IPs, when it comes to your research, what is your process like? This is about personal branding. <laughs> um, research, uh, research is always happening. Whether it's a conversation with people, whether I dedicate you know, an hour or two to dive into Wikipedia, uh, looking at other articles, um, or creating the resources myself. Uh, what you'll find is that there's no, there's no repository of information specifically about African comics. Uh, but I and um, 
a man from uh, Squid Media. That's wrong. Don't Squid quote Mac. me on that. Squid Mag. Uh, from Squid Mag have put together a spreadsheet that from Southern, Central, West, North uh, Africa, and it, it lists out all of the comics. So just having a link to find that, or just even knowing that this region, just at a glance, this region makes more comics than that region. Or these ones are just easier to find, and that's, that's in the branding sector. Because like, I have nothing on that spreadsheet, it's full, but there's nothing in North Africa. Mm. And now, it, now there's like that political thing of um, when you're breaking up the continent, um, Egypt falls under the Middle East. Mm. So like, do you count it as like African? Oh, they country? left? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're trying. Um, I mean, the continent is splitting, but spoilers. Um, the, point, the point is that research is always happening in, in whatever form. You never know where inspiration is going to come from. And you never know what thing is going to take your story in a new direction. Amazing. Yo, uh, if you're not wearing a Comics Post t-shirt, I invite you to sit down. I invite you. You, you paid for it. You earned it. Enjoy. There, there was the a comfy question. seat. There you go. Hi, uh, my name is Eleni, I'm the owner of Elle of the Garden, and I assist artists in their hustle. Um, your pricing is something that really impressed me. You've got an excellent product, exquisite range, and the pricing is like really accessible. How? Just to preface, she's shading every she's shading everyone else who's here, and I'm <laughs> happy about that. She's like, whoa, ten dollars. Um, the pricing is good because I have a designated printer in South Africa in Joburg. Um, I put everybody on Laura, Laura at Hartwood. Everyone who makes comic books, you see, he's giving a thumbs up because I like. She really does a really good job of making sure that the quality is high, the paper is good. Um, and then she also like makes recommendations. I wanted to get into board games, and she's like, L -l "Look at me, Bill. Look at me." Mm -hmm. We had like an hour-long conversation as to mm -hmm. why it's a bad idea, and then at the end of it, she gave me a price anyway. Wow. So like, question: Do they ship to Zimbabwe? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Don't mm -hmm. do that to yourself. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Yes. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Awesome. Just give a round of applause to Trevor. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Keep walking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, stand. Okay. Yo. Why, why are you making him stand and everyone else got right? to sit? Uh, like, you put <laughs> pressure. <laughs> now, now, if he sits down. <laughs> nah, there's no way I'm going to sit down. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'm Bush Baby X rated. I'm yeah, a hip hop yeah. artist. Yeah. Um, my yeah, question yeah. is when you're making your stories, mm -hmm. when you're creating your stories, yeah. do you accept the responsibility? No. That <laughs> well, then, then, it, then it's answered. Please finish then. your question. <laughs> no, I was saying, do you accept the responsibility that you are actually shaping the psychology of the children because you're basically like uh, their generation's creation of the mythological figures? If, if I'm saying it no, right. No, no, no. I, I oh, yeah, what hell, you done started something. <laughs> how much time have we got? <laughs> how much? You can't just thumbs up. How much? Uh, Let's keep going. Okay, okay. I think that's a, that's a really interesting question. It's I fantastic think, question. Yeah, from back in the day, I think this is something that Tino and I were, were often kind of confronted with. You know, you always have parents, um, leaders in education, the general public asking, why don't you make... Uh, you can finish off. No. Yeah, no, yeah. You super, must super, finish what you super, super cringe, super cringe. Yeah. Um, but there is that responsibility, or you feel like it. How, how do you? We I, we had our ways of doing it. That was a long time ago. That was in 2010, 2009, maybe. We had our ways of doing it. How do you? How do you manage that? Uh, I don't manage it. I just let it happen. But I, I'm aware of it. Um, I'm always thinking not just the mythology, not just the superheroes. It's like, your book, anyone here, your book might be the first comic book somebody sees. So they don't know how to read it. They don't know about power systems and magic systems. There's a lot that, as we as creators, absorbed through reading lots and lots of comics. And we try to skip that step because we don't have the time, right? There's like, and you're, you're a hip hop artist? 
Yeah, so like the, the, the hip hop culture that was built up in America was decades in the making before we got to the point where it is now, right? It, like original hip hop was speaking to particular social issues, but now if you're a social rapper, you're like, ah, you're trying to be Kendrick, right? Right? And so with the, with the comics that we're making, yes, yes, somebody might read this and they'll, 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 their life will be completely changed for better or for worse, yeah. right? Because maybe your writing is garbage and then that's that about that. Yeah. But it's the same thing when you're trying to get somebody into anime. Um, for those of you that do watch anime, uh, for those of you that don't, it's like, I don't know how I feel about anime as, as in general because mm. it's all one block to people who are looking from the outside. But there's romance, there's yeah, drama, yeah. there's, you know, histor there's historical fiction, there's really deep dives into, into medical history. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not as linear as it's, hospital it's, dramas. It's not as linear as, oh, I'm not shading Grey's Anatomy, yeah. but um, <laughs> it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the first thing that I did was go grab a comic, uh, a medical comic, mm -hmm. and it, the, the, the drawings are so detailed. Those are medical diagrams. Yep. And if, some, if someone is first experience is that they'll think everything is that and so like it's important that your first interaction with somebody yeah because we're mostly sellers like we're, we're merchants mm -hmm. we don't there's no comic book shop in zoom you have to tell them there's other comics out there yeah. it's important that we propagate and build up each other it's like you've read this oh have you read that yeah um, yep. Panache is at my table. He's talking about Razor Man. I don't sell Razor Man anymore. Oh, yeah. It's been a while since yeah. Razor Man. I don't, I don't sell Razor it's Man anymore. It's been a minute. Panache is there. Speak of the devil. So, Howdy, so, Lucifer. So it's, it's important that we don't just tell people about our stuff. Yes, we want to make, make, make sales and tell people about our stuff. But it's more important that we as a community, as Comic Exposed, as Scripts and Bars, build each other up. Yeah. Because if, if we die and it ends with us, we've failed. I got dark really fast, but I feel you. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Um, I'm uh, sorry. There will be so others. In, in, that same, in that same light, uh, there's a conversation that constantly follows Captain South Africa. And I think it's related to what Bush Baby asked. It's in the, the brand. It's in the name of the, the, the comic book itself mm -hmm. and the fact that you're Zimbabwean. Mm -hmm. And I like how you gave a lot of great context to the inspiration for the book. How, how do you like to um, explain it in the most open-minded way to people who give you that, you know, you can anticipate that criticism. Why make Captain South Africa when you are infected from Zimbabwe? Who, whose character are you emulating? <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> let's, let's, keep, let's keep it. <laughs> this, is this is personal. Um, so I do get the question a lot. You as a Zimbabwean, I get it from both sides. Yeah. You as a Zimbabwean, oh, snap, why are you? Oh. Yeah. Whoa. It feels more xenophobic when they yeah, do it. Yeah, I saw the Springbok <laughs> tweet the other day. I was leave like, me oh. Alone. Leave oh. me alone. Um, they'll ask me, Bill is a Zimbabwean. Why are you making Captain South Africa? Why not Captain Zimbabwe? The easy answer, which I like trolling people, is that there's already a Captain There's two Captain Zimbabweans. Yeah. Like one made by a Chinese company. And the other, he, he gave up. Nah, like, it, it sounds like I'm joking. If you just open Facebook and type in Captain Zimbabwe, you will just be surprised. You will just be surprised as I was. One made by a Chinese company. Yeah, one made by a Chinese. It's a local Chinese company. Um, no. No, no, don't make that face. It's a, it's a local Chinese company. And the other one is, uh, he doesn't make comics anymore. Mm -hmm. He's a graphic designer. So, you know, there's that thing of, there was a lot of graphic designers that said, we're using the same programs. Why yeah. not make comics? Yeah. So he just hasn't continued the series. I take no ownership for... Uh, like, there's a lot of respect. Yeah. Like, no one else is making Razor Man. Thank you for that. Um, and then, just on a, on a political level, I try to be... I try to navigate it case-by-case case basis. Yeah. Um, but what I'm doing now... And I, I told somebody just now, I was like, I'm no longer making Capital Africa. So, because I want... I want to build the industry. So like I've been saying this whole chat is that we can't do it ourselves. Yeah. Doing it ourselves will burn out. That's why there's a lot of number ones and not a lot of number tens. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a great idea and then just doesn't know how much effort goes, goes into, into continuing it. to yeah. make this thing happen. Yeah. And without that, it's, 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 it's the, the queen statistics. died. The queen died. English they, is gone. They upgraded. They got it. <laughs> without that sustainability of industry. There we go. Without that sustainability of industry. Uh, why are we even doing this? Yeah. And so I'm not, I'm, I haven't discontinued the series. I've said I want to hire people 
I want to get a writer, I want to get an artist, I want to get a colorist, and I want to put them on rotation, mm. right? Because Super Strikers used to do that. I of don't course. know whether anyone yeah, knows Super Strikers. Clyde Beach and Super them? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, so Super Strikers was, uh, it's a collaborative effort, there was mm. a big company, and a lot of the people who now are guests at Comic-Con who are working for Marvel DC, yeah. uh, even Loiso, Loiso he's, kids, he yeah. now, he's now working for DC. Mm. Actually, that whole team has branched off to do different of things. Of course, of right? course. It's because Super Strikers was their foot in the door. Mm. It's like, hey, I want to make comics, I don't know how. Here's someone to mentor you how to make it. These are the best practices of industry. Don't, we don't do that anymore. What you thought was making comics, no. Also incorporate graphic design. Actually, here's some help. There's, there's like a, uh, yeah. there's a chain of information. It's a, it's a ripple effect. That only exists if you have people above you. Yeah. And I want to do that for other people. Am I going to get you a job at Marvel? No. But mm. it'll be your foot in the door if you go want to go make all your own comics. Exactly. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I was going to close off with um, questions about sponsorship and um, how you're navigating brand partnerships. I mean, you, you're venturing into snacks, and I know you do not know how to bake. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting cooked. But, but you, uh, I'm getting cooked. We are talking about food. So... <laughs> Uh, you want to talk about that? How, uh, what, what kind of partnerships have you established in order to realize some of these dreams that you have to make snacks and venture off and do books and then venture off and do statistics and research? Like, what kind of partnerships are you leveraging? Hey, that's for the more important people later. Those, those are the, the guests who have made it. Ask pious, <laughs> ask pious about all of that. No, um, no. Oh, no, but I, I have an answer. I have an yeah, answer. Yeah. So the, the snacks that I have today are a proof of concept. Because when I was telling people, like I was, like I was, telling, I was telling you earlier, yeah. when you pitch something to people and it doesn't exist yet, we're not, we're not trendsetters. Mm. And so explaining, yo, if you put characters on packets of any snack, then it incentivizes people to buy that because it's bright, it's colorful, and then there's a personal attachment if that character is doing well in comic book, even if they aren't. Mm. Um, so I have a trading card game there at my desk if you want to buy it. I only have limited items, so I'm not going to be able to... Give I, mean, everybody. I mean, look at the demand. I mean, yeah, the, no, the, the room demand, is the explosive right now. You can't so I, hold I have, themselves back. I, I, have, I have trading cards. Mm -hmm. And I don't play trading cards. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Pokemon, Pokemon anything, yeah. people got into that brand at different entry points. Yeah. Some people were on the trading card games. Mm -hmm. Some people play the Game Boy game. A lot of people watch the, the anime. anime. Mm -hmm. Some people watch the live action movie that came out recently mm -hmm. on Netflix. And then some people read the comic book. I didn't know there was a comic book until like... I started doing the research for this. Wow. But like everybody has a different entry point and we know that there's branded food for Pokemon. Mm. And so it doesn't matter what your entry point is as long as your brand is visibly strong. And I'm trying to establish a part partnership. Yeah. These packets are like selling them here to say, what is the initial experience? Yeah. Because Tokoloshi Hunters, that the brand that it's attached to, yeah. also only came out recently. Mm. So what, what are you, what is the consumer yeah. connecting with here? And wow. I've, thank you so much for everybody who's you know had the conversation with me. This is market research yeah. that I can take to um, an actual food brand and be like, yo, this actually works. Yeah. Also, here's my comic. Also, here are links to everything that I've done to help you get an understanding of how this industry works. Excellent. So I know a number of people have joined us right in the middle. Welcome to Com Exposed, everyone. I am speaking to Bill Masugu. Um, he's a comic book artist, entrepreneur and many, many other things, writer, editor, you name it. Um, Bill here has been talking about how to build personal brands and he's been walking us through his journey with the various titles he's worked on and um, the various uh, research he's done and so on. So I'm inviting anyone who's got a question from the past maybe 10 minutes. Trevor, we've got a hand over there. Thank you, good sir. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, Hello. My name is Marvel Marufu. Uh, I'm an animator. I have an animation studio called Animation Nation Zimbabwe. Wow! Uh, Hello, Ma let's clap hands for Marvin. Ma <laughs> yeah, yeah, a, yeah. Feels great. I have a question yeah. um, with regard to your art journey. I think it's very important as well for the brand. Uh, like, uh, if you can um, just walk us through on on, on a or give us a pointers on how to improve your art. Like that's, that's 2016 a great question. Today. You know, I was gonna, uh, for the purpose of some people who just came in, and I know there's some guys that we invited here that are new, fairly new to the comic book business. Mm -hmm. Do you mind, you know, just walking us through your journey from beginning? Sure. Yeah, you can censor it, of course. There's some dark bits in there. No, I'm not censoring <laughs> I have a book on Amazon if you want the dark bits. <laughs> All right, I um, bought it. I bought it. We've got uh, 10 minutes. 
Let's let's give it your best shot. Give it my. Are there any and other save, qu- save there, room for some other questions? Are there any course. other quick questions? So I give this the bread. So of course so got a question. Arthur Law has got I a question. So Come Trevor, on. you're taking note of these guys. Yeah. You're the man. Let's clap hands for Trevor, everybody. Yeah, Trevor for yeah. walking. Yeah. 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 Is that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shame on you. Okay, let's go. Um, hello, everybody. Hi. Um, I'm Marvin Tichangani, also known as Artolo. I'm a digital artist, uh-huh. concept artist, and illustrator. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I have a question. Yes. Um, it's very easy for one person to actually get caught up based on the comics that they read. They can yeah. easily just fall into a superhero trait yeah. of making superheroes, superhero comics constantly, constantly. Uh-huh. How do you find a good middle between like what you did with Tokolo Shantas uh-huh. and Kamsa Tafka Wepa? It's political. Uh-huh. Still African based, uh-huh. but also has like the inspiration from your typical Marvel and DC superhero aspects. Yeah, yeah, awesome. I'll I'll bake those two questions together. Well done. And then well done, Atalo. Like that, it's good. Soko, right there. Yeah. So you're just gonna come yeah. up with a, like a kombucha on the hands. Hi, I'm Soko Matsumai, a hip hop artist. I wanted to find out: Can we expect to see your comic books? Uh, being turned into like animated movies or no. live action movies? No. Not? No. You're not interested? I mean, this question comes up no, far too no often time. and people just don't understand how much money it costs Wait, to make an animation. Put it, I think if you put it together with your journey and then you mix it up with the answer for Artelo, you can actually close off with his answer no. and it'll make perfect sense. Okay. Give it a shot. Okay. I got you. Okay. Hi, my name is Bill Masuku. For those who don't know me, uh, go read the brief on the PDF flyer because we don't print anything. It's not 1993 apparently. I don't know why anyone born in 1993 is being shaded. So, um, yeah. so I, I like most people, like drew at home when I was young. I was inspired by cartoons. I was left alone with the maid for too long. Uh, while my brothers were at school, parents were at work. Uh, obviously fell in love with Scooby Doo and uh, Swat. Ah, it's not a dark story. Come on, man. Come on, man. And the, um, <laughs> you, you, you saw it too, didn't you? <laughs> but anyway, uh, please. <laughs> this is my peak. So, um, and now you've made me break my train of thought. Cartoon. Survive the there domestic go, situation. I didn't survive. <laughs> I didn't survive a domestic. It's not too much time. I'm here, aren't I? Uh, so I obviously watched a lot of cartoons, like everybody else. And then at some point, I stumbled upon uh, Joy TV's uh, anime Samurai X, Samurai X. Uh, or Ronnie Kenshin for you weebs and it changed my entire perspective of, of cartoons because cartoons are supposed to be at least how, how I felt it's supposed to be episodic that's how they got the name Mapopai it's like 15 minutes of nonsense if you, those of you that don't know I'm a Popeye because your parents are like let's put them in front of a TV it's not gonna affect them there's no real story here right and but then Samurai X had the first episode I watched to be continued what do you mean we're supposed to wrap up the story in 20 minutes and we didn't and I had to wait the next day and the next day and it, next like, week the next week I will, J, J TV had like the episodes were because mm. clearly piracy was anyway so uh, yeah, I was really inspired by that and obviously I started drawing ninjas and samurai and that's I really like that was my weeb awakening mm. uh, my nerd awakening sorry translate nerd awakening for everybody uh, obviously watch sci-fi channel on uh, DSTV when I was still there uh, that's the dark part because Sci-Fi Channel also had some nonsense. Uh, skip that part. Um, uh, I wasn't allowed to draw. My dad, my dad is the typical African dad. You have four professions that you can be in. Being an artist was not, not one, one of them. them. Um, he destroyed and burned and tore up a lot of my drawings. Uh, there was one time I came back from school and there was just a little bonfire in the backyard. It's more traumatic than I'm making it sound, but anyway. Um, he just, like, at any given point, it would just make sure that I was not going to be an artist. All right. Um, and I just focused on school. I got an A in maths, obviously, because I studied. Uh, stay in school. For those of you who are 16, I talked to a 16-year-old today. Where are you? There you are. Yeah, stay in school. So, uh, eventually, you know, I, I let it go for a while. Also, because there's no industry here. There's that local thing of, I don't see anyone doing this, and so I'm not inspired to do it. Uh, being the first person to do anything is very scary. Shout out Neil Armstrong. Uh, Lance Armstrong? Neil Armstrong. Are they cousins? Which, the guy who, you know, one of them was on Oprah. So, <laughs> too soon? Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, um, I eventually went to uni and I started doodling again because my drawings couldn't be burnt because my dad was in Zim. I was in South Africa. Uh, but the, like, I had spent a long time not drawing yeah. and I lost confidence. 
Because uh, there's a momentum to drawing. Like, even if you draw all the time as a day job, you skip two days, you come back. How do I draw a fish? Especially, it had to be a fish. It, Mid-journey. It, it, fish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I don't use mid-journey. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> we, um, we got you on record. <laughs> no. That's like, that's a photo. <laughs> so, but that's a video. <laughs> um... And so eventually, you know, again, I was inspired by the women I went to university with because there was lots of protests at the time. Uh, a lot of must fall movements, a lot of fees must fall, uh, roads must fall. There was a lot of like colonial movements that were happening. And these were championed by strong women who were still getting their education. And I had been doodling Captain South Africa. The first issue, no one will ever see that. It's nonsense. Because I, I, I mean, I still can't draw, but I couldn't draw Wessa then. Mm. Like, I couldn't draw but one. Yeah. So now. <sighs> It was, he was just a buff man in spandex. Mm. Like, what am I bringing to storytelling? This is now I'm still going into uh, uh, Malo's question. Yeah. Uh, what am I actually bringing into the zeitgeist of, of, of all storytelling? Narrative, yeah. design. Like, and, if yeah. someone looks at this and then looks at somebody else's African superhero and somebody else's African superhero, like, we're all just derivatives of Captain America, mm. right? And me more so than anybody else, because my character is literally called Captain America. Captain something, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which people hate, by the way. Funny. Um, it gets even funnier just now. Two seconds. Let's go. Um, and because I was inspired by these women, I was like, let me, let me just retcon the first one out of the story. But I was mm -hmm. like, no, that's lazy. Mm -hmm. He goes missing. And I was like, let me reboot the series. Wow. Um, and now it starts off three years later. It's not like anyone knew about three years before. Like, only I have that issue. But three years later, uh, he's gone missing and we need a new captain of Africa. And, sh and obviously, I've deeply incorporated those women. It's like, she, she was, in those three years, why wasn't she there? She was getting her degree, guys. Like, oh, she, yeah. she was studying politics. Stay in and school? More. Yeah, stay in school. You, 16-year-old, stay in school. I'll continue to cook you. Uh, and, and at this time, what was your, what, what were you doing to enhance your skills? What year was that, roughly? This was uh, second year for me, 2013. Wow. Sure, I gave away my age. You're Damn. young, man. Um, so anyway, um, I wasn't doing much to improve my skills because, like, mm. there was, again, there's very few people actually doing comics visibly. Okay, and this time you were, you were based in South Africa yes, at the time. Yes, I was based in South Africa. Okay. The, the couple of people that I knew were doing it were uh, Sector Comics. Uh, I yes. collected all their books. I have their books if you want to buy them, like, different art styles. Uh, really good, like, spread of what a comic means. Mm -hmm. None of them are superhero stories. All of them are fantasy, historical, political. So do, do definitely come and cop a copy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when I sus suspended my studies, the first thing I did was look for you. Yeah. Me? Yeah. So I, the first thing you must do is always arm yourself with knowledge. Like someone was asking about research, right? Yeah, it's all coming together now. Huh? It's all coming together now. Like an Avengers. Shape the an story Avengers together, of questions. right? Yeah, that team art. Did you see that? Um, you got to do your research. And I was like, there's no way I can be the first. Like, it's, like your ego is huge. If you walk into a, an industry that doesn't, it doesn't exist and you think you're the first, that's nonsense. And so the first thing I did was, you know, LinkedIn, Zimbabwean comic, oh, Eugene, Ramirez, okay. <laughs> um, and so I saw that, like, there's two people who are making comics, you know, Tino and Eugene. And, like, if you are... What year was that? No, I, no I'm done exposing my age. <laughs> um, so I was looking for Tino and Eugene. Um, and it was... So Tino had the back-to-back... Uh, gun dog and gun, gun the gift. Dog, yeah. And then you had hot shots, which I couldn't find. Mm. Uh, but it was evident that there were people here who were making comics. And so they called us into the Comics Post offices with, when they were still by Greenwood Park. Yeah. Damn, Greenwood Park. So it was a vibe. Just it was a kid, vibe. The kids it say was a vibe. It's a, you know, it's a vibe, right? There was a time. There was a time you go to the Comics Post office and it was popping. And I was like, when does Tino get work done? <laughs> like, we're always here just making noise and trading anime illegally. So, Japanese government don't be here. Mm -hmm. So now, um, after that, after interacting with, you know, obviously mentors of the industry, interacting with... Uh, James was my contemporary. He was also making comics. James is amazing. Yeah, James is amazing. He's over there. He's digi art. He's, got, he's a superhero guy. If you want superhero, if you want Zimbabwean superheroes in space, in the future ish, he's there. Yep. He's there. I've read every issue he's ever put out. Side note, side note, if you want to meet a real life Zimbabwean superhero, make sure you look for James. Yeah. You'll get what I mean when you talk to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a tired round of applause. Uh, Y'all better okay. do that again now. No, 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 that was no, inspiration. No, no. That was my Selma moment. I'm taking it. 
<laughs> we got three minutes. We got three minutes. Kidding, kidding. Um, and so I made Razor Man, uh, which was like a Zimbabwean superhero kind of. It was. This was the birth of Enigma yeah. Comics. This right? is the birth of Enigma Comics, right? After all of the training you gave us, make a banner etc. Um, and then 2017, we don't talk about 2017. Um, yeah, spoilers. Come to my table, buy things, and I'll tell you about 2017. <laughs> um, and then 2018, it was a lot of self doubt because. Mm. Um, again, I hadn't been drawing for years, and everyone else here is either trained as an artist, gone to art school, or literally ch- trained by Eugene here, uh, Dan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just like, my art will never compare to these guys. Like, I'm a good writer, clearly people are buying the books, they continue to buy the books, but my art is not where uh, American comics are, because there's always, that, there's always that benchmark of reference to be like, if you're making something, who is the best practitioner in the industry? If you, if you yeah. want to make a car, obviously look at the people who are making cars the best in the world. Yeah. I, I think that it's important for me to, to share something at that point. So when I first met Bill, it, it was very apparent that he'd been out of practice, but his stories were really good. And I remember reading through some of the material, and I know he wouldn't want to say this up here, but I love calling myself out. I was like, look, Bill, your stories are great, but you might want to shelve the art and write normal books like regular books and I, and I know at the time he wasn't ready for that you remember that conversation i <laughs> i remember that conversation is here but but you know what um the interesting part is he went on and improved on the artwork he stuck with everything and now he's doing both he's got you know traditional books yeah. and he's working on comics so yeah. either way he took the advice yeah i did i did, I did take the advice wait disney's publishing a book book isn't it no disney's publishing a graphic novel i'm writing it you, so eventually ah, we came full circle full circle yeah yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that's my solve my moment that's it that's <laughs> finally <laughs> finally yeah. Um, skip, 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 I, I think skip. we're heading over to yeah. Soko's question, answering Soko's yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. What, what even was Soko's the, question? The animation and the so The animation. On. Nah, my G. Um, when you get into this industry, it's very easy to be like, oh, you make comics. Why don't you just... Why don't you just make a movie? Just, so to make a comic book, right? I, I recently did the numbers because I'm trying to pass on Captain South Africa. Mm. At minimum, and this is paying these people not a lot of money. Like, I'm just like, as a favor, here's some cash. Uh, it's about 52,000 rand, right? Which, that's a pretty penny for a team of like three. Mm-hmm. And that's before printing, that's before distribution, that's before all of the overheads, that's before anything else. Right? Wow. Um, and to make an animation, uh, I was recently at Avi Josie. It's all tying together. Mm. At Avi Josie, I was watching some pictures uh, done. One of them by Lola, a good friend of mine. Hey, I can say that. Lola Adkins is yes, amazing. Yes, yes, yes. I can say that now because I've met Lola. Um, Lo- when Lola pitched uh, her 10-minute movie, so that's 10 minutes of animation by a studio that worked on um, Primal. Hidden Hand. Hidden Hand Studios. Uh, they worked on Primal uh, and something, you know, it doesn't matter, for time's sake. They worked on something international. It costs 233,000 US dollars for 10 minutes of animation. Yeah. Look so, it up, it's called Lesedi. Yeah. yeah. Naledi. Naledi. Yeah, yeah. I'm not South we, African, we forgive will, me. We will uh, just, just cut that out. In post, don't worry, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Chat GPT it. I know um, the editor. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you look at, if, if $230,000 for 10 minutes is the thing, asking us all the time, when is the series coming? Give us the money to make it. We'll happily make it. We've got the skills. Yeah. But like, the, the, oh man. And like, who's an animator here, sir? There we go. That's Malvin, like, right? Can, yes. Yeah. Please, please go talk to him about how much it costs to make anything. Um, when when, when um, executives and people who are like business people want adverts and they think, oh, animation will be popping, give us your budget, and you give them the budget, they ghost you. Because yeah. it's like they're not realistic about how much money goes into this piece of work. Yeah. And so it's either we cut corners, give you a shoddy job, or you pay us full price, and it's internationally amazing. Wow. And when you give people the money, who's next? Who's the next speaker? Pires. Uh, no, we're gonna get a, we're going to go into a short screening. But on that note... Uh, Bill finish is point. yeah. Finish, finish your point. point. Go for it. Make it. Make when it. When you hot. give people the money, you get something like Kizazimoto. Yeah. You get something so high quality that Disney Plus is just shelving it to the world, and it's Zimbabwean. People are flying in Ruseros. It's 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 proudly and an, unapologetic. An, thank you. An unapologetically the... Zimbabwean and amazing. Anyway, that's my time. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I, I wish we could keep him all day. Let's give Bill a round of applause.